All right, guys, so in this tutorial, what I was going to do is I was just going to show you guys something called a first responder. And a first responder is actually pretty cool because it allows you to handle like items on the interface a little bit better and work with user interaction in a really cool way. And we'll get to that. But then I was like, you know what? In these examples, it's pretty dumb that we have to look at this layout because, first of all, it's incredibly boring. And second, it's probably hard to learn on this because no app in real life looks like this and it doesn't really resemble anything that we would actually use so instead before I get to that tutorial I decided to build a really simple interface that resembles kind of an app that we would use in real life in other words make an interface that isn't incredibly ugly so already what I did is I made a blank Xcode project I didn't add any code or any designs as you guys can see so before we get started, what we need to do is we need to import the images that we're going to use on this interface right here. So anytime you want to import images, hop over to this Xcassettes file. And again, any assets, any image assets that you want to use in your project on your view, then you need to import them as Xcode assets. So that's technically what this file stands for. So what I did is before this tutorial, I just made a quick background, which is pretty much just a square. Um, it's like a dark blue texture and also a logo real quick. And if you just want to grab any images from like Google images, or if you design your own, then you can use those. But if you want these ones, then they're on the forum under the iOS development slash Swift section. So download these. And another thing I want to mention, if you're using your own, make sure that you have ping images. Don't use JPEG or GIF or anything like that. And once you have two images that you can use, then just take them and drag them in the main asset section. So first of all, now they're imported. Now we can use them in our project on our interface, but I probably should mention this. You see how it says 1X, 2X, 3X? The reason for that is because technically whenever we're making an actual project, we should import um, images of different resolutions. Why do we need to do this? It's because Apple, they're making devices that always have better resolutions. For example, the new iPhones, they have this, this thing called retina display, which is just um, a better screen. So for those, again, right now, just for like demoing everything, it's just gonna take these images and scale them to fit the screen. But if you ever actually sell an app on the app store, then you actually want to import an image of different sizes so it can appear on different resolutions, maintain that quality. But for right now, this is good. Hop over to your main storyboard again. And before we start adding stuff to our interface, what I wanna do is this. I want to get rid of my file navigator. So I'm going to click this button and I'm going to open up this view right here. Now in the main view, I'm going to hop over here and uncheck use size classes. So uncheck that disable size classes. So again, I know that this is kind of the cheating way, but the scope of this tutorial isn't really constraints. So we can cheat, do things the quick way. So now, our storyboard resembles an iPhone, which I want. It'll be easy to demonstrate. All right, so let's finally get to it. How the heck do we add a background image? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to add an image container. So if you just type in image, we can add an image view, which is pretty much an area that you can display an image. So if you take this and you drag it across, look what happens to the size of this. As you start dragging, it automatically resizes to the size of your entire view. Now, the reason it does this is because Xcode knows that the first image you add to your screen is probably going to be a background image. So you can, of course, resize this if it's not, but it automatically fits it for you, which is pretty cool. So the only thing that we have to do is we need to make sure that it is positioned in the dead center of the screen. So once you see both of those layout guidelines, you can drop it and bam, it's the perfect size and the perfect placement already. So what we can do from here is we can actually set this image view, which is just a container that can hold an image to hold that blue background image. So to do that, once it's selected, 
click this little icon. This is the attributes and is the image property select blue background or whatever file you're using. So that check it out. It adds that background image pretty stinking awesome. So now what we can do is we can just add the logo. So of course we want to add another image view somewhere. I don't know, maybe somewhere around there. And the image for this is orange logo. All right. So I don't know. It looks all right, but it's stretching this and that isn't really what I wanted. So if you don't want your image stretched, I mean, it's, it's fine for the background since this is just a solid blue texture. That's actually what we want. But for this logo, what I actually want to do is go down to mode and I'm going to put aspect fit. So what this does is it maintains the aspect ratio of your image, but it also fits it to the container. So, so I'm just, just going to take that and put it in just like this. Hold on one second. My humidifier is making stupid noises. Freaking. All right. Now it's messing up my project. Okay. So once that's taken care of, it's always a good idea to add some constraints to this. So highlight your logo. And if you go to editor, align, horizontal center and container, that's going to lock it horizontally. Now, of course, it's yelling at us because as we know, whenever we position anything using constraints, it says, okay, you told me how to do it left and right. But now since you took care of the positioning, you have to tell me how to do it up and down. So a pretty cool way that you can quickly get rid of these issues is you can select whatever item is giving you issues. If you go to the resolve issues icon, which is this triangle with, um, I don't know that line behind it. I really don't know why they made that icon. Hmm. Funny how things are. Anyways, what you can do is you can just have a really quick pop up to resolve any issues or any um, warnings for how things are positioned. So this is kind of like the real quick and dirty way. But if you just go to add missing constraints, then it says, okay, whatever rules you're missing, then I'm just going to guess what you want to do position. And I'm just going to add all those constraints for you real quick. So again, it added a, a whole bunch of rules. And of course we can go back and tweak them if it didn't guess right. But for right now, looks good. Got rid of all those warnings. So right now, the only other thing I want to do is just run and test this and make sure that we are good so far. So, all right, check that out. We have a background image and it is appearing exactly where we positioned it horizontally and vertically. So now that we got that taken care of, we are ready to go on to the next tutorial and continue building this interface.